okay so welcome to this class on on costing okay in today's in today's class we will be looking into uh, costing what are the fundamentals of costing and while doing a startup and especially when you are planning for your finance how you are going to how this costing is going to help you uh, in doing it today just we are going to uh, uh, learn about the few basic uh, things about costing which sometimes you might already known to you if you are a mechanical engineering student or if you are from a, a, a business background you might have already heard this terminology so uh, i am keeping it in lighter note so elements of costing so first what is cost right so whenever we are manufacturing a product we have to sell the product whenever we are going to sell the product we are going to fix some rate to the product okay how the cost of the product is determined so basically the cost of the product will be determined by the cost incurred in manufacturing the product okay and we have different cost to calculate this to we have different cost which has to be calculated together or or aggregated together and this aggregated value will give you the cost of the product so when i say cost of the product or the selling price of the product that means i am going to have some profit margin in that before i sell the product in the market say for example if i am taking 10 rupees to manufacture a product i may set the selling price of the product as minimum 11 rupees or 12 rupees so depending upon the profit percentage what i am going to plan so similarly when you develop your product as a startup you are going to add the value or you are going to add profit to that money which which was which was totally uh, uh, involved in manufacturing the particular one unit of the product okay so when i say elements of cost i can classify that into three types majorly one is for the raw materials the other one will be the labor cost the other one is going to be the overhead cost okay so now now we'll see one by one so according to the nature of elements we are going to classify the cost as material cost labor cost and other expenses or we call it as overhead expenses okay so further how the uh, what is the classification of cost when i say classification of cost it's going to be classified into three types based upon the nature of elements like material labor expenses and again further all this material labor and expenses can be classified as direct cost and indirect cost okay and indirect cost involves all overheads production overhead administrative overhead sales overhead and distribution overhead what is this overhead when i say overhead it's it's confusing right what is this overhead overhead is a, a type um, a, in overhead cost is the other expenses what we do than on the direct labor direct material and direct expenses that is the other cost which ever is involved other than material and labor we normally classify as production overhead administrative overhead sales overhead or distribution overhead whenever we add all the indirect cost together we are calling it as overhead cost okay so now that's a confusion then we should know what is direct and what is indirect so let's see one by one when i say material cost it's about the raw material or the finished goods or the semi finished goods we call as material okay it depends upon the product product variety or the product what you are going to manufacture direct cost is the cost which is paid for the material or the raw material say for example if you want to make a cloth you are going to pay for the cotton if you are going to make diesel you are going to pay the, the raw material cost is for the crude oil if you are making automobile steel if you are if you are constructing house stones uh, uh, bricks cement uh, steel bars all these are coming under direct material cost okay then what is indirect material cost okay say for example i am uh, i am i am going to uh, i am going to uh, indirect material cost right so i am going to construct a house okay i am going to construct a house so to construct the house the primary raw material required may be bricks stones cement etc but again i may be using some uh, uh, some tools right some tools or some other equipments which is not directly required to manufacture the uh, product so those things we may call it as indirect materials 
Okay, say for example, uh, you are you are making a arty craft. So uh, like, sometimes you may require a glue, you may require a thread, you may require nails. Say otherwise, uh, otherwise you may put it in simple words. You are going to make a chair. Okay, to make a chair, the raw material. If you ask you, what is the direct raw material? The wood is the direct raw material. What are the indirect raw materials? You may require glue. You may require threads to measure nails. Okay, sometimes uh, you may require. In sometimes, if for an exam, we may require uh, stationeries, uh, uh, printing materials. So all these things are coming under indirect material cost. Okay, so if you under the primary raw material, we call it as direct materials. The other supporting things we may call it as a indirect materials. So material cost we are classifying as direct and indirect. So, next, labor cost. So we when I say labor cost, again there are two types. One is direct labor, another one is indirect labor. Then who is direct labor? Say for example, in a college, the professors, the uh, the the, the non-teaching staffs, they all come under direct labor. Okay, so now we will understand. So professors' main job is to teach, and the lab attenders or the non-teaching staffs uh, or the lab assistants, uh, they will be taking care about the lab and lab-related activities. Okay, whether these two people are enough to run the institute? No, we require uh, more people to support us. Like the accountants, uh, we uh, we may require security people, uh, we may require some janitors uh, to keep our campus clean and neat, and uh, security people to support us uh, to provide us good security, uh, and we may need a health, uh, healthcare employees. Okay, so all these other frontline workers nowadays we call them frontline workers are also required to to run the university. So direct labor who is directly involved in the production of the product. Indirect labors are those who are supporting from outside. If it's a company, again the labors who are going to manufacture the product, who are or, who are involved in in machining the component or constructing the house, they are called as a direct labor. The indirect labor are the other people who are supporting this activity to happen. So they those people we call as indirect labor. So now you know what is direct labor and indirect labor. Next we have expenses. When I say there are sometimes we call it direct expenses and in indirect expenses. Okay, say what is direct expenses? Direct expenses is the money which you are paying for the labor and the material. Direct labor and the direct material cost we call as direct expenses. Okay, say for example you may require um, making a layout for drawing a designing a designing a drawing, or you may require some. Tools or equipments for the production activity to happen. Sometimes you are going to spend on the, uh, maintenance equipments. So all these things we call as direct expenses. Then what is indirect expenses? Say for example, uh, if say say you are you are having a house. Okay, let's keep it like this. you are having a house, or you are going to have your office for your business. Okay, you are going to buy uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, computers. You are going to buy some tables, some chairs. Uh, some printers, uh, uh, so uh, some fax machine, so or or all these things can be uh, put under direct expenses. Then what is this indirect expenses? Is the rent what you are going to pay for your office, the electricity bill, the insurance bill. So all these things can be put under indirect expenses. So now you know what is direct expenses and what is indirect expenses. Okay. So uh, this is about direct and indirect. Then we have overhead expenses. If you are able to sum up or aggregate all indirect material, indirect labor, and indirect expenses, then we can. If you are putting them together in one group, we call them as overhead expenses. This overhead expenses can be further divided into three types. One is factory overhead, administrative overhead, selling and distribution overhead. Okay. So overhead expenses means summation of all the indirect material indirect labor and indirect expenses but again overhead expenses can be classified into three types one is factory overhead administrative overhead and selling and distribution overhead okay what is this factory overhead okay so factory overhead i am going to run a run a business i am going to have a, have a machine shop in my company where i have a lot of machines and every time, sometimes I have to maintain, main, do the maintenance activity of the machines. I may have to lubricate uh, the machines. I may use uh, based cotton or cotton based to clean my hands and uh, all the gloves. Uh, nowadays, if you take hospital, all uh, uh, PPEs, okay, personal protective equipments like the mask, uh, the the wear whatever they do, uh, the hand gloves, all these can come under uh, factory overhead. 
we also need some stationary items so all these things can be put under factory overhead then we are selling overhead because uh, uh, marketing doesn't happen in easy easy way even to market a simple soap or even a one rupee chewing gum or a chocolate advertisements are there uh, we, we are, you have to advertise your pro, uh, your uh, your product okay uh, so if your product is really good and if it's having a very good customer uh, we don't need to do the marketing but sometimes as a startup when you're launching the product you are supposed to do the marketing activity so we, to do that marketing activity you need some money okay so that we call this that money you have to put it under selling over it okay such as cost spent on advertising uh, in any mode maybe in tv or uh, maybe uh, in social media wherever you are going to spend some money okay then we have distribution over it what is the distribution over it in order to promote the sales of your product you are going to give a certain percentage of your profit as commission to the retail shop or to the distributor or to the salesman only when you pro promote or when you motivate by giving some incentives to the salesman they will be uh, they will be uh, supporting the sales of your product for example if you you could have a, have a, uh, had an experience like when you are visiting a grocery shop or when you are visiting a, 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 a mall or somewhere you could see the salesman coming to you and, and asking you to uh, say for example uh, coffee uh, there may be a new coffee uh, company or coffee brand in the in the market they will come and ask you sir could you allow to uh, taste this coffee or it, it it often happens with okay if you want you want to try a new ice cream which we release in the market uh can you try this uh, product and uh, product it is free uh, you can try the sample packet is free like uh, they'll try to promote their product uh, with you if if the customer really likes the product he will he or she is going to buy the product so uh, so this is called as a distribution over it so you're going to spend some money in promoting the sales activity of your company again if you see there are some companies or some some uh, electrical appliances company uh, showrooms showrooms what the tv showrooms or the fridge ac what they do is they will sell you the product and they will tell that installation charges are free or or home delivery is free when companies are doing home delivery is free people will okay they will be an, an assembly or fitting charges is free we buy from them because there you can cut down the cost of around like 2000 rupees you can cut down per product you are buying an ac imagine you are going to buy the ac bring it to your house you are going to fit it you can't do it again you have to hire a uh, person to do that activity a, a exp experienced uh, uh, assembler or fitter you are going to uh, bring so who may charge or, or ac mechanic is required to may charge you more so rather the company and the showroom they have a tie up they tell that you buy this product we are giving giving you this product for uh, for um, uh, this much money and also we are giving you uh, the uh, assembly uh, free assembly and the delivery home delivery then you will buy the product so that's how this distribution overhead works so it's about including sales uh, including advertising uh, salesman salaries commissions packaging storage transportation and sales administrative cost then we have administrative overhead administrative overhead is very simple like you have a manager a manager you have a, a someone or a supervisors uh, to take care of the sales activity or to take care of the production or to take care of the uh, business okay we generally call them as managers right in simple terms we call them as managers so these people they take care of the activity business activity and they are the decision makers okay of course you, if you, you you are owning the company but you may have some managers to take care of the business in different see ambani is the C, ceo or as the owner of reliance industries but he can't go and check in all he, he has multiple businesses he can't go and check what happens in every shop floor or every company what is happening he can't go and check so he have he has appointed several ceos in his business so these people we call them as administrative so so when you are paying salary for these people we call them as administrative overhead sometimes this administrative overhead also includes salaries paid to the lawyers the attorney generals uh, who's use or, or financial advisors or share advisors uh for your company so when you're paying the people who are taking control or who are who are actively involved in running your business we call them as administrators and the salary paid to them can be put under the ending administrative overhead okay so so far we have seen about direct cost indirect cost on direct material direct labor 
direct expenses indirect labor indirect material indirect expenses and when you sum up all indirect costs together we have calculated the overhead expenses again in overhead expenses we classified as factory overhead selling overhead distribution overhead or administrative overhead okay so and we discuss about some examples also so these are this is about uh, costing or the elements of costing again when we say uh, when you run into business there are uh, again the cost can be classified into three types one is fixed cost another one we have variable cost the other one we call as mixed the third one we call as mixed cost what is this fixed cost say for example fixed cost are items whose Uh, rate or whose rate will not change for a cost will not change for a particular period of time say for example uh, you may rent a house okay every day the rent is not changing it is fixed for a certain period of at least for one year we have the same rent then the property taxes or the salary paid to your employees or uh, or uh, the, the cost of advertising cost of insurance especially insurance they don't change rapidly they they are some kind some kind of fixed cost Okay, for a particular number of years or particular number of days, the cost is not going to change. We call such cost as fixed cost. We also have certain cost which changes, which changes when there is a change in the market. Whenever there is a change in demand in the market, the cost of the product is going to change. Those costs we call as variable cost. Okay, say for example, you can have direct material cost or direct labor cost. Mostly direct labor and direct. material cost are classified under variable cost why because if you want to construct a house you are going to uh, say for example for one day work or or if to to construct square feet one square feet you may pay 300 300 rupees or 400 rupees to a labor if the same labor is going to construct two square feet or three square feet depending upon the area what is going to build his salary is going to get varied so depending upon the uh cost of the i mean uh, the, depending upon the uh, upon, upon the work what your employee what your labor is doing the cost or the money paid to him is going to change similarly depending upon the volume or the quantity of material what you are going to use your your material charge is going to vary so again there are some certain reasons say for example if there is a, a pandemic situation like this suddenly there is a ri- uh, rise in the cost of all items so situation situation dependent so whenever there is a scarcity of demand scarcity or or huge scarcity of material is there and there is a huge demand in the market or uh, market we will have variable cost okay so when there is no rain and when there is a, when there is no cultivation happening the cost of the food items will go up when the gst is laid cost of the product will go up when the petrol price rises the cost of the food items will also go up because the farmers has to pay for the petrol diesel to bring that product to the market and also they have to pay the third party people or the uh, middlemen to bring the product to the market so depending upon the cultivation depending upon the climatic situation depending upon the demand in the market the product price will change continuously or vary continuously that's why we call them as variable cost then sometimes we have mixed cost mixed cost is like semi variable cost sometimes uh, it's a mix of both okay there are some peculiar situations where we will have mixed cost uh, like uh, if if uh, cost of coffee is more cost of uh, uh, tea will also uh, uh, the demand for tea will be more like there's some 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 dependent cost we used to call them as dependent cost so some items are like that these are the some formulas for you to uh, calculate the items that is selling price is total cost plus profit or loss the first statement what i delivered in the class okay you are going to manufacture the product and you are going to add some profit to this uh, to to the uh, to the product to, 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 to the overall to, to the total cost of the product so you will get selling price you manufacture your product total cost is 10 rupees you keep your profit of 2 rupees then that is called a selling price primary cost is a summation of all variable cost or it is all, it's a combination of all direct expenses or direct cost direct material cost plus labor cost plus direct expenses so when you add all direct cost together you get primary cost when you had primary cost plus factory overhead you get factory cost so factory cost is was direct material direct labor plus direct expenses plus factory overhead this factory overhead value you have to calculate then total cost 
total cost is what adding factory cost primary uh, prime uh, factory cost plus selling overhead plus distribution overhead plus administrative overhead that is factory cost plus it's a summation of what directly is summation of direct and indirect cost total cost is nothing but summation of all direct cost and all all indirect cost selling overhead distribution overhead administrative overhead they all come under indirect cost so factory cost will be the direct cost okay so that's how we calculate uh, the selling price okay so we will wind up the class here uh, so just i want to tell you what is about costing okay so now if you have any doubt i will be uh, i can clear the doubts for you